I'm just going to show you how to create a few different types of mockups in PhotoP. And I keep all of my mockups in a folder that I can pull from on my computer. And today we're going to look at a beer glass, a doormat, and a t shirt. So you're going to want to go ahead and open up the PSD file in PhotoP to get where you need to be. Click open, and then it'll open up. So you can see the glass here, same thing with the doormat, and same thing here with the t-shirt. And we're going to start with the glass. You see where the rectangle is? That's what you need to create your smart object. And you'll see that in all three. They have that little rectangle there that you need to double click on to get your achieved results. And again, same thing. You find your tiny little rectangle there and you go from there. So we're going to go ahead and start with the beer glass. I went ahead and opened up three different files and sized them appropriately for the mockups, or at least to what I think needs to be sized at. We're going to want to get that in there. So double click on your smart object, which is that tiny little rectangle. It's going to open up a new layer and you're going to want to take your design and size that as needed. Um, sometimes it's a little bit trial by error, but I went ahead and sized it for 2000. You're going to go ahead and duplicate that into the smart object layer. And click OK. And then when you open that back up, you'll see your design in there. And you're just going to want to position it where you want. And then you will go ahead and click Save Smart Object. You can also do this by doing Control S, which is what you'll see me do. And then you'll see that your smart object is updated. And there it is. It'll be on the beer glass or wherever you're placing your design. And then you go ahead and export that. You want to make sure that you change your quality as high as it goes. Um, I always change my pixel width because I usually work with smaller designs. I can't upload anything more than 2,000 pixels. I'm going to go ahead and change the name there so that I can easily find it in my downloads and just go ahead and export that. Um, <clears throat> and again, changing my pixel size because I can't upload anything to my store that's greater than 2,000 pixels wide. And you can see how it kind of contours around that glass, which is really cool. You could play around with sizes and where you want to place it, depending on how you like it. So we're going to go through that same process with the, um, the doormat. So you can see where the design is there. I'm going to close out on the layer from the beer glass because we don't need that. And I've already pre-populated my design. And I'm going to go ahead and double click on that. You can see where they already have their pre-design placed. Same process. You're going to duplicate that into the smart object layer. And you'll see that go on there. And then you're just going to want to place it where you think it'll look good. This is going to take up most of the doormat, so it's going to look really nice. And you're going to want to go ahead and save that smart object again. And then you're going to go and click on the doormat, and you'll see your design populated in there. You can go ahead and rename that to whatever you like. I actually made this product sitting on my back patio right now. People always laugh all the time because I'm a single mom of three. <laughs> my kids are usually running amok, so it's appropriate for my backyard anyway. And again, you can go ahead and change your pixel sizes and make sure that quality is set up to 100%. Some of these files can be really big, but uh, to me it's you know worth it to get more of that realistic feel when you're doing a mock-up with a good placement. I'm going to go ahead and close that out. We're going to do this again with the t-shirt. Um, I just wanted to go through a few different types so you can see how that looks. Um, one thing I like about this, and I got this through Freeman Studios, and his link is in my blog post. So that he leaves those thumbprints so you kind of have a reference as to where you want to place your design. And also those t-shirt contours that really help. So we're just going to duplicate that in there again. Drag it down to where we think and turn those t-shirt contours on to see where it sits at. And if you're happy, go ahead and save it. And then once that smart object is updated, you can um, go ahead and click on it and you can see where it has uploaded now. For All right. And yeah, for some reason with this one, 
these smart filters just kind of mess up the design, so I always turn those off. It doesn't really make that much of a difference. Um, I've tried messing around with it a little bit, but um, I just uncheck the displacement and it seems to be fine. Then you're just going to go through the same process of exporting the file, renaming it. This is one of my favorite physical products too because I'm not very PC. <laughs> You're just going to want to go ahead and save that. And you can see it imposed on the shirt there. Yeah, now i got to go through and change the pixel sizes. So that way I can use it. And then you see the design right there, which is really nice. And just click save. And then you have those for use in whatever you need. Whether it's Pinterest or whatever. And now I'm just going to go through a flat lay mock-up. And I have a bunch of these. And I purchased them and basically created these templates that I can use. You can see these t-shirts that I've bought. And I've had to uh, crop the files a little bit to fit into my ratio. But we're going to go ahead and do a couple designs here. I got this Boo Felicia design I made the other day drew on the iPad and then created. So you're just going to want to copy the image and paste it in and position it where you want it to be. And you can resize it obviously. And I'm doing this right in Silhouette Studio. And just place it wherever you think it looks good. And then you can go ahead and, and save the file. And it's just that easy. Um, I went ahead and grabbed another one of my designs and I'm going to go ahead and place it in this white t-shirt mock-up. Like, these are old templates. I don't use these anymore, obviously. They're my old color, my old branding. This is the old way I used to do my mock-ups. And I just don't use this process anymore. To me, it's just super cumbersome. I like the way the smart mock-ups look better than the flat lace. But some people prefer the flat lace. They can be good for certain things. Um, it just is really a personal preference thing. I think it takes a little bit too much time with these ones, and so I just tend to not do that. And I'm just going to show you what this design looks like on here too. I mean, the nice thing about smart mockups is you can change shirt colors for the most part, so you don't have to purchase like multiple different mockups to achieve the same results, depending on what you're going for. So to me, it just makes more sense to use the smart mockups, but the flat lays serve the same purpose and they do a good job. Um, I know some people who can create some really nice stuff, so I'm just going to go ahead to my um, website and please feel free to give my blog a, a check and a bunch of different blog posts in here and I'm going to be posting about mockups and how to use them very shortly. Also, my Facebook group, I make sure that I update as I go and post different things I'm working on um, and any updates to the blogs or whatever, my cute kids, and go from there. So hit subscribe if you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about mock-ups and what you can do, give me a comment, and I hope you have a great night.